Welcome to the Women of Yesen podcast. I'm your host, Sophia, and this is an invitation to join me and our amazing guests to find inspiration and insights into your own journey to Yesen. If you ever feel overwhelmed or confused along the way, I'm also here to support you so you can tackle your challenges with confidence and make progress towards this lofty goal. To find out more about my work, check the episode description and make sure to subscribe. Well, إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome to a special episode of the Women of Ihsan podcast. Today, my guest is Maryam Abida, who was one of my guests uh, previously on the podcast on episode 18. So uh, Maryam is um, the founder of Elite Equilibrium. And today we want to discuss um, the tour that she did in the UK. It was called The Alchemist of Happiness. And from there, we want to discuss uh, things related to um Muslim spirituality. Maryam, thank you so much for making the time today. Jazakallah khairan and salamu alaikum again. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's such a pleasure to be back here with you uh, recording and just having such important and inspiring conversations. So thank you for inviting me again. Truly a pleasure. Thank you so much. I told you I would I would find an excuse to have you again. <laughs> True, you did. You did. And here we are. You are a woman of your word. Let me tell you that for sure. Mashallah. May Allah protect you. So, uh, Nariam, I really wanted to hear from you, you know, get the details. I've been following uh, you on the tour, The Alchemist of Happiness. I mean, just the, the, the title is just so beautiful. I was, uh, you know, following the stories and, uh, you know, publications on Instagram as you were touring uh, in the UK. And uh, subhanAllah, it was so beautiful, the venues and um, obviously the talks. I wish I, would, I, I could have attended. So I thought, okay, uh, I will have Maryam here and she's going to like to tell us all about it, how wonderful it was. And, you know, how maybe just let's start with this. How did the idea come about um, and how did you um, organize all of this? What was your role and how did all of this come about? SubhanAllah. Well, um, before starting anything, um, my first thing that I would say is a shout out to the Lantern Initiative and without them uh, as a collaborator uh, on the tour, this tour wouldn't have been possible. So working with them um, in collaboration with them on this tour was truly, truly, truly a pleasure. And, you know, we've thanked each other. We've had those conversations and I thank them once again. So definitely a shout out to the Lantern Initiative as a team, as an organization, as a team uh, and their values uh, and intentions truly uh, showed throughout the, the experience, right? From the start to the finish, uh, to the finish line of this project. And then you've asked me like, how did this idea come, up, come about? To be honest, I cannot pinpoint the moment this idea was born, but I do remember the moment I took it to the Lantern Initiative um, and where we started considering that project. And it was, the idea was born actually with Ustad Ferdun himself. So, you know, how he said uh, the Alchemist of Happiness and how amazing the title was. I cannot uh, take credit for that, uh, nor uh, the Lantern Initiative. So for us as a team, we didn't come with it. It was uh, Ustad's idea and I was working uh, I was in conversation with Ustad Ferdun Mujaddidi from Zaytuna College from San Francisco about other projects and uh, different ideas that, inshallah, uh, will come to life. And um, I'm not sure how exactly, but the, 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 it, it was through conversations, right? And the thing is, like, as an individual, as a human being, we think we plan, we think we put ideas and projects together. But at the end of the day, 
رَمَيْتُ مَا رَمَيْتُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى We plan as we plan, but Allah is the best of planners. And the Lantern Initiative uh, and Elite Equilibrium as two organizations, we were actually putting another project together for this July that we've decided to park uh, for you know different reasons. Uh, and inshallah, we'll come back to, to our audience with that project. But the uh, the tour came about and subhanallah it's just like i would say i would you know i would allocate it to you know just good intentions uh you know uh good people that i have the chance to work with and it's just like one idea comes and someone else puts another brick and another brick and then the projects at the end comes you know to fruition and we might have had you know a hundred plans and dreams and ideas but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly facilitated every step uh, and has put barakah in in the experience uh, that both teams have had so 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 yeah truly a beautiful experience I don't know. I, I went on a ramble there, uh, but I, I think I did answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Mashallah. It's it's amazing. Okay. Subhanallah. And uh, sometimes we think um, like it's so complicated and um, but uh, it just starts with an idea. Yes. You know, and then having the right people and like you said, the right intentions and and Allah facilitates it and subhanallah when i look at uh, when i remember like the, the pictures and the venue and uh, the guests um it looked truly incredible i don't know how long you, uh, it took you to to organize all these events but in the end like from what i could see it looked really gorgeous and uh, and really amazing alhamdulillah alhamdulillah well um, I think that the Lantern Initiative and, you know, um, uh, myself and my team at Elite, uh, we're going to be very, well, we're very happy and I'm going to take your, your feedback, but listen to, to this episode as well, inshallah. But to be honest, we, we did work very hard. Uh, absolutely. We've spent, uh, you know, a project like this is going to require a lot of your time. Uh, so we've had about, I think, um, six public events uh, and you can imagine in between we have uh, uh, meetings and networking uh, opportunities with organizations and with Ustad etc so it was quite a compact week um, that we've had in the UK but definitely took uh, took a lot of work and a lot of time I would say a, a good three to four months of planning um, uh, up to the execution uh, so yeah, I, I would say a good three to four months, uh, but uh, definitely a well-spent three to four months, alhamdulillah. And, uh, you know, we uh, the thing that was the most important to us is the experience of each audience member uh, that decided to trust us with their time. Uh, and obviously, there it was all ticketed events, so people purchase those those events and we wanted to honor people's time and money uh in terms of like um they're trusting us with their evenings as well uh with their weekends uh so and and obviously Ustad Ferdun is such an amazing teacher uh, and it, it was truly experienced by every um you know uh, person that attended the events and and uh that was that was truly you know uh, a pleasure for us as a team to see uh people happy and uh, our intention was definitely to host events with Ihsan uh, and quality on every level from the uh, promotion of the events to, you know, design of the flyers, the lives we've um, uh, we've had on social media to promote, the stories, uh, the, the way we've captured the events, uh, the sponsors, uh, you know, and also like, uh, you know, I thank the, the, the team, but also without the sponsors, this event wouldn't have been uh, uh, possible. So shout out to to all of the sponsors that supported us from Reminis to Ruji the Foodie, Nedin Banchi. Um, uh, I'm forgetting a couple of sponsors. They'll come back to me, so I'll mention them later on. But basically, without without that community support, the project wouldn't have been the same. So uh, the sponsors that we took on board understood the vision that we've had for the tour and they've trusted us uh, trusted us with that so uh, a lot of trust also go, goes 
uh, goes in place. But before the trust is all that communication uh, that that goes in place. So um, so you know, transparency is very important, uh, and communicating your vision to the other team because this was a collaboration, right? So uh, without that collaborate uh, that collaboration the project wouldn't have been the same it wouldn't have looked the same right so acknowledging that as an organization uh is very important right so in these type of in these type of projects like egos people's egos can come into place uh and alhamdulillah i can say that you know with with in this context specifically um everyone that was involved it wasn't about them uh, I think that what that's what brought blessings. We faced many challenges, believe me. Imagine like, you know, when you organize one wedding, right? Um, it, it's it's quite, uh, you know, you, uh, uh, it's quite challenging. You face so many hindrances, trying to keep everyone happy. Misunderstanding might you know, uh, come to surface, but it's all about communication, right? And we've promised that to ourselves, you know, between as a team uh, any questions let's raise them uh, if there is any um you know uh, second guesses let's it was truly open communication and allowing ourselves to enter our agreement um you know with with ihsan in terms of attention to detail uh to to every potential you know challenges that come might come our way but also um coming to the understanding that we're removing ourselves uh, as individuals from the delivery of those projects. It's true, like, you might have seen me on the stories and you might have seen, uh, uh, you know, Mohsen, or you, uh, you, you might have seen uh, Sephora or other team members, uh, uh, our filmmakers reminisce, filming, uh, volunteers, and... Uh, like the amount of people involved, I can't even start to to just count the numbers. I would say about 20 people uh, were involved in each of the cities. So it's almost like, you know, I would push it between at least, you know, 50 to 100 people in total that uh, have, you know, volunteered their time, have supported the project, volunteers on the day that were setting up, packing up, all of that. Um, and subhanallah there was so much barakah in this in this project and I, I would allocate it to every single person that came and invested their time was for the right reason and uh, absolutely the self was removed uh, maybe the self came back for all of us uh, i can say it for myself you know uh, the ego is there and sometimes we might feel frustrated or something's not happening quickly enough and it's like okay let's let's you know take a step back Okay, why are we doing this? It's not in my control. Allah is the ultimate decider at the end of the day, and he is the wakil. So when you remember that and you're working with like-minded people, the experience is so pleasant, and then you can see it in the experience of that audience. So, so, and I would take all of that back to the teacher um, and his intentions. And at the end of the day, that that's what... Uh, was, you know, the ripple effect on every detail that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so, mashallah, it's um, it's really beautiful to hear from you. And one of the things I, I thought about as you were speaking, and, and then you said that in the end uh, about uh, attention to details, and subhanAllah, this is also part of doing things with excellence and with yasan. Um, and at the same time, you um, you also you're also saying it's not easy and how much work has to be um has to be put in terms of you know like um the things that need to get done like you need to to communicate you need to get everything ready but also the work which is happening from the inside which is removing the ego from the equation and i think this is something um, only people who have been on such collaborations and the bigger the project, um, the more room for misunderstandings and problems, uh, subhanAllah. And um, obviously, it's, it really was um, a big event. Uh, you were in six, uh, is it, was it in six different cities? Maybe you could, you could, uh, you could um, 
walk through us, uh, walk, walk us through again. Um, I know you were in London, you were in Birmingham. So we did, yeah. So we did Cambridge. Yeah, so Cambridge, yeah, yeah. there wasn't any public events, but we we did some tours and visits, and uh, we uh, visited, for example, um, uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad uh, from uh, Cambridge Cambridge Muslim College. We went to the CMC. We met the Imam and uh, the the board there. So that was more, and we did. Uh, uh, Ustad did deliver the um, Jumu'ah. Uh, there as well, so people can watch that as well. It's actually available on yeah, the uh, Cambridge Mosque. Yeah, the, that khutbah was, oh, it, it was such an amazing start. That was the first uh, basically public event and non-ticketed, obviously. It was a Jum'a Salat. And uh, we had about like uh, 15 people, 1,500 people present uh, that day at a minimum, I would say, uh, of uh, men and women and families. There was even a bride that day. It was oh, it, it was just so beautiful, the whole thing, the whole experience. There was so many micro um, celebrations throughout the tour um, that, that followed us through. So it was quite beautiful. And um, so, yeah, and you know something that you said, the bigger the project, the more opportunities of conflict that can, that might arise. So the, the secret there that, uh, you know, whenever a team member invited us to a conversation of a potential, oh, I didn't understand this, or this. there was sometimes that, um, you know, I misunderstood something or Sephora or Mohsin or whatever other organization. It was just about inviting each other to that conversation, um, you know, um, clarifying things. It's like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Let's move forward. So that open communication is what's going to give you success in any project that you undertake. To be honest, I've, I've, been part of much 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 smaller projects that had much bigger problems and caused uh, immense stresses and uh, misunderstandings and you know whenever you invite su Ivan or you leave that crack uh, for the shaitan of uh, accusations and if you close the door to conversations there will be no falah there will be no success in what you're undertaking Right. Yeah. So and that's in any relationship, to be honest. And I often compare business relationships to to personal relationships because you, you enter agreements. Right. Whether mm -hmm. with your husband uh, or with a friend or with your in-laws or whatever it could be. Right. So that open communication and respectful. Right. Um, whenever you're in the, you know, um, when you go below the line, then you'll just end up there right so inviting ourselves to you know a higher purpose in life usually facilitates that experience that positive experience alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so yeah it's basically when when you when you have your eyes on the uh like you said the vision the end result like you agree yes. upon this like this is what we want to get then at some point you can't uh, you can't afford to um, jeopard, jeopardize um, the the outcome because of you know personal disputes and but exactly the, yes. but what you need first is having this common um, goal together we want to reach there together and then when you have agreed upon that and that's like you said in any type of relation in relationship whether at work or personal life we know we need to get there so Okay, at some point I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you, you you remove your ego and you don't have to be right all the time. And you need to have, like you said, open co communication, accept that sometimes other people have different perspectives, but you, but you achieve, um, you know, you, to, to get progress because you still have this goal um, at the end of the like, at the end of the line, yes. this is where you want to get. Subhanallah. So that's why and it's really, really important to have to agree upon. Okay, where are we going now? Absolutely. And you know what? I'll add to that. It's the relationship with the self. When, when, when you, it, you absolutely need to do that. You re-question yourself. And I always tell people, anyone like with my mentees or anyone that I'm working with. As long as you're not the dhalim, that's it. You thank Allah and you move forward. 
If you are, it's okay to make mistakes. We all make the mistakes. I, I've made a thousand mistakes, you know, over like 15 years of experience in the field. And I've had mentors and we learn and we continue to learn. Up until this day, I've had like, you know, positive experiences and more challenging experiences, but there is a gift even within the challenging experience. It's an opportunity of learning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you on, on those goals and visions that you have. And it's important to not get, you know, uh, I truly believe that shaitan, when he sees you, you're doing something right. He's going to try to find a way to make it wrong. Of right? Yeah. So, so. You know, istighfar is important. The relationship with the self of questioning yourself, okay? You know, every salat that we make, we have those appointments with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we don't do that work, then it will show in the in the end result, right? Or in the experience that we have. And there is no need to point the finger or the other person or how can I learn? How can I improve this? How can I improve myself for this situation or this conflict um, not to happen again or for, for me to learn from it and improve for the next time? And that was definitely the philosophy with the team, alhamdulillah, right? So that be like choose wisely, right? And, 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 and work on yourself wisely as well. So it's yeah. not, it's not about pointing the fingers or claiming either that this happened because you know i'm so good or i'm so smart or this or that or i've worked harder on this than you but you know like we just all bring the different things to the table that complete the team in different ways right and you cannot while you're working on the marathon right on that longer project of thinking like oh but i've i've given this much time on this but that's great. That means you have more strength on that and the other person is bringing something else and we're raising the awareness to each other on different things and accepting as well that, okay, maybe uh, someone has a better idea than me, right? And how can I add onto that idea? I, I think that was the main philosophy of like, mm -hmm. um, just trying to do things with Ihsan, right? I wouldn't say we did things with Ihsan. We we did our best to do things with Ihsan. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah. So, mashallah. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's definitely in line with um, the spirit of, of the tour. I mean, um, you can you can also share more about this. Um, so why was it important for you to, um, and for Ustad to talk about poetry and what is at the end of the day because some people were not into poetry and I myself I was um I was kind of um you know it, it depends how you grew up like how what kind yes. of exposure you have had with um with the subject matter and the thing is like Islamic like let's say um from our tradition poetry is not the same as western um uh, poetry in French or English, is, it has another texture, another taste to it. So, what really, what is um, what is the importance of poetry that you were willing to put this event together, and um, what kind of message would you like to to convey um, with all of these beautiful events? Allah. Well, first and foremost, um, as I said, the, the the title and the idea and all of that is is uh, the credit uh, to Ustad Ferdun Mujadidi, and uh, it, it's basically his field of expertise, right? Um, but for myself, wanting to be uh, involved in in such a um, project, I would say. Um, uh, you know, at some point in life, we all question ourselves, right? We have our own journey with with our faith and trying. At the end of the day, it's we're all seeking to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do the right thing and live as good Muslims. And the idea is within our religion, we have so many ways to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through salat, you know, the the the, the mandatory uh, worship um uh, uh 
worshiping tools that we have, whether it's salat, psalm, hajj, uh, uh, you know, zakat, uh, the shahada itself. So we have we have the mandatory um, uh, pillars of Islam. We have our pillars of iman, and you know, uh, we have the concept of ihsan within our religion. We have the muhasaba, the muraqaba. You know, reflection is part of our uh, worship. Zikr. Right, um, dhikr of Allah, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet Ali every after uh, after every salat we have adhkar, right, to complete yeah. our worship. Those are not mandatory, but they are Sunnah muakkada, right. Um, so the Prophet Ali was not a poet. Salam. He wasn't. He was a uh, he was a, a messenger, and he brought uh, the Quran to us. Right from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Word of God, and Quran is our best dhikr. There's no other dhikr except Quran that comes first, right? And and the other adhkar are extracted from the Quran. However, we have wise men within our tradition that came after the Prophet ﷺ that shared their words of wisdom in rhymes. And that was part of our Islamic culture. Right? It's so embedded within the Islamic culture that the different poets through Islamic history, you know, had uh, has expressed their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their reflection in so many languages. And this tour, within this tour, the, the poets that we've we've studied uh, wrote poetry in Arabic, in Farsi, in Urdu, in Punjabi. So we have at least four languages uh, that were utilized. And these four languages come with four different cultures that are in different continents, right? So the idea of poetry has always been part of Islam. And even the Prophet والسلام, enjoyed the words of poets, right? So... The idea here was to take art and to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the words of wise men. What was their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, for example, we have the Qasida Burda. It's one of the Qasaid that is, um, you know, chanted uh, and sang all over the world. Right. It's one of the, the poems that has been read the most in, in, in history. So that that gives you an idea of the importance of art. And one of them, one of the forms of art is poetry and poetry in Islam is definitely part of it from the start up until today. We have nasheed, uh, we have, uh, you know, sp um, spoken word artists all over the world. So it is a medium uh, to express faith um, and beauty of faith. It's simply a human expression of that. And for me was to just be a part of uh, conveying that art and at the end of the day, just being uh, on the uh, being part of the journey of people uh, for them to reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was for me. It was a personal journey as well uh, to reconnect uh, with the divine through poetry, because I did I did go myself through uh, a phase of apprehension of like, OK, how 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 much impact can it have? But it does on the heart through the ears through those beautiful words and and rhymes so so it was it was in a way of um enjoying art beauty um of our faith in in an in a, in a slightly different form uh, this time when i say slightly different form in terms of like it, it was still an islamic lecture uh, it was still reminding us of like the simplest concepts of islam however through an artistic form Mashallah. Yeah, and it reminds me of uh, this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, who told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is beautiful and he loves yes. beauty. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, you know what? I had that exact same saying, Allahu jameelun wa yuhibbul jamal. So, uh, and, and beauty can be expressed in so many forms, right? Why are, or, uh, the, the message of the Prophet didn't have any calligraphy on it. 
right? However, our mosques nowadays have been decorated with Quranic verses and Arabic calligraphy, uh, a Chinese calligraphy in China, right? Of, mm -hmm. of Islamic concepts of praise, praising of the Prophet, of the Sahaba, uh, uh, Prophet right? So, mm -hmm. so the idea of, of beauty and expression of art um, has just evolved in, in different forms of expression. However, poetry uh, has always been there. Yeah, yeah. It was before, yeah. like pre-Islam, there was um, absolutely there were poets all already. Um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And actually, I have a book here behind me that is, uh, unfortunately, you know, this session is 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 uh, is not a video session, but um, I, I'll share a video about it. But I have a book behind me here, and it's actually I'll show it to you. Uh, it's actually about a hundred years old, and uh, it's my grandfather's book. Oh, mashallah. And, um, and oh yeah, you told uh, us that uh, your your grandparents they had a library. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. Yes, yes, I did. I, I did mention that in uh, in my TEDx talk. And um, yeah, so this is one of those books, and it was actually the book of my grandfather, where um, it actually details concepts of aqidah in poetry form. And a hundred years ago, that's how they used to um, memorize. They created uh, rhymes in order yeah. to make it easier because our yeah. tradition is written, but it's oral uh, yeah. as well. So poetry was used to convey theolo theological uh, concepts and virtues for centuries. So yeah. in a way, and it's it was still like... Used, and it, it's still used because uh, we use uh, these books of uh, fiqh and um, uh, tajweed as well. Um, they are yes. also with rhyme. And we learn that like to, to have an ijaza in these... Um, in this uh, subject matters, you need to learn this text by heart. So yes, it, and it helps absolutely. you memorize. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Mashallah. Yeah, that's a good. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a good reminder. But um, it was always there, and we are. How do you say that? Um, can't find my words. Anyways, j'ai envie de dire, tu sais, um, perpétuer la tradition. You continue oui. to... Oui, oui, absolu absolument. It's about perpetuating that tradition. Mm -hmm. Please keep this part uh, <laughs> in the podcast, so... the French part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so no. I, I would say, I agree with you. It's about perpetuating those traditions. And whose tradition are we perpetuating? Rasulullah he salam. showed appreciation um, of poetry and it is, it is conveyed to us through the ahadith that um, that show us the appreciation of the prophet of poetry, uh, the wisdom behind it, and that there are his appreciation of of morality and truth that can be conveyed uh, through through poetry. And and the prophet Isa encouraged us no, to use um, uh, uh, poetry to inspire, educate, and and promote ethical conduct. Even uh, students back in the day, before starting school, they actually learn an entire um, uh, a, a poem about the adab of of uh, of the muallim and the student, right? Oh, of the teacher and the student, and that relationship. So it was mm -hmm. again taught through that form of poetry, memorizing it. You know, the more you repeat something on your tongue, you know, you're hearing it. And then at some point, it's going to make its way to your heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It is in your brain and it will make uh, uh, its way to, to your heart. So it's about like finding that balance, right? I'm not going to encourage anyone to stay in that, you know, airy fairy um, Islam or just uh, taking uh, what is quote unquote beautiful and leaving the rules behind. No, it's about being grounded in 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 your pillars of islam and iman and then how can you beautify that through different forms uh, uh, expressions uh, forms of expression uh, art expression uh, different forms of different forms of art oh sorry i forgot so different forms of expressions that we might have right whether it's uh through paintings calligraphy uh poetry and um 
yeah, even book writing, storytelling uh, for kids. So, so, so many sources of, of expressions. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's definitely room for this creativity and artistic creativity. And uh, subhanAllah, um, as you were speaking, I was also thinking, you know, maybe what makes us sometimes cringe a little bit or being a bit apprehensive is again because we come from um, a background which is not Islamic. But when you get into Um, like in the Islamic tradition, you realize that there is always mention of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is, it is in and of itself um, a type of remembrance of, uh, and dhikr. Obviously, it's not the same level as the Quran. Like you said, the Quran is number one and um, mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot compare the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything else. Absolutely. But... As, as human beings, we have, um, like, the, 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 these people, these poets, um, um, these scholars, they have produced um, these texts or, archi like, be it architecture, architecture, sorry, um, paintings, uh, calligraphy, and to beautify the spaces, subhanAllah. Absolutely. And again, because... It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us this desire for beauty. True. Very and, true. And like he created, for instance, all of these beautiful sceneries on earth. Just look at the flowers, the different shapes and, and colors. And he, he, we, didn't, we don't need that actually, like to, to, to live and survive on earth. We don't, live to, we don't need to have flowers and to have all of these perfumes. And, but he gave this to, to us as gifts, but also as signs to remember him and see Absolutely. the beauty and see the beauty around us. And, um, and, and remember. Like the, also the, um, subhanAllah, he says in Surah Al-Mulk that he put the, the, the stars in the sky to beautify it. He beautified the sky, i.e. for whom? For us to look at it and being like be just amazed at the beauty of the sky, subhanAllah. Absolutely. So he, he created this desire for beauty and so it's only natural that we try to recreate, obviously the creation of mankind is, has nothing to do with creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but trying to produce things um, which beautify our spaces and beautify um, our rituals um, and just make life on earth more beautiful. Um, so I think it's... Uh, It's good to to be rem like to remember this. Like, there's nothing wrong. We don't have to. It's not an obligation to live as ascetics, like you know, go up in the mountain and um, live just survive on water and um, on dry bread. No, it's not like that. We can enjoy this life within, like you said, within um, the framework of Sharia. Simply put, yes, um, yes. And and for spirituality, I think it's important that we um, we remind ourselves first um, that, like first of all, what one of the things I was I was telling you before uh, we started the recording. Nowadays, we try to put this term spirituality um, as a replacement for religion or faith, because. It's more, I kind of say, it's more, you know, soft, you know, so more yes. like people, people from any kind of belief, they kind of agree on spirituality, subhanAllah. What it tells me is we as human beings, Allah, he put in our heart this, uh, this um, place that belongs yeah. to him alone, like the yeah. heart. Yeah. Belongs Absolutely. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely, and yes. We need to fill it with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you don't have this, well, you're going to fill it with something else because there is a void. 
And so nowadays we just call this spirituality. Like there are people, they call themselves, like we don't identify, identify to any faith, but they say that they are spiritual. Yes, and yes. This is where we as Muslims having a clear aqidah, having clear beliefs in what should be filling our hearts, we should be um, mindful of not going overboard or just um, accepting any kind of, again, spirituality as being okay in the sense that, um, like we say in French, you know, there's this, uh, this old song uh, which was saying, on ira tous au paradis, like we're all going to paradise. Like whatever you look like, whatever you believe in, we all go into paradise. As Muslims, we do not believe that. And we need to just accept and own this belief that obviously there, there is a difference between the Muslim and the non-Muslim. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Um, there's also there's also a difference between the Muslim and the Mu'min, right? So we have uh, we have a framework. You know, something that uh, I would definitely echo that you said is the foundations. You know, you you were speaking about being clear and comfortable in your beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. So we do live in a world where uh, you know. Atheism is not, it's no longer in fashion. So uh, being agnostic is, right? Believing in a higher power, a creator, and not necessarily a framework or a religion um, uh, to follow. But uh, yes, being I do a, believe in being God. A, uh, being a free spirit. Yes, uh, yes. So, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did create us as free spirits. Right, and he's put us in bodies, and uh, we are having this very much uh, physical experience that does not feel very free, because the nature of our ruh is not to live forever on this earth. Uh, we live in a world where frameworks do exist. So if you decide to be that free uh, spirit, whatever that means, uh, that's okay, I guess, for you. But we all need to know that and accept that whatever you say, you are f you are following a framework, right? Uh, it might not be Islam. It might be the law of the land alone. Um, you know, uh, it might be cultural expectations, peer pressure, uh, whatever framework you're adhering to and you're accepting. So I, I would call people to live a conscious living and choose that framework consciously, right? And be proud of it. Especially I, I, I make that calling to our uh, brothers and Muslims in Islam and honor that religion of peace of amana of kindness and you know we we entered this topic through poetry right and we've addressed it earlier and it came back to to my mind you know i i referred to the prophet I said to salam, appreciating poetry and rasul said to salam, there's a hadith uh, from sahih al-bukhari and sahih muslim uh, and it it says inna min al-shi'ri la hikma so indeed there is wisdom in poetry. And that those are the words of the Prophet, <laughs> right? There is wisdom in poetry. So you, you don't take it as a whole, as a word of God. Absolutely not. But there is wisdom to be extracted. Um, and within the context of, of, um, of poetry, Rasulullah <laughs> also <laughs> gave <laughs> another hadith that is relevant for poetry and outside of poetry, but also that says, Inna al-mu'mina, it doesn't say uh, inna. Actually, it says al-mu'min laysa bi ta'an wala la'an wala fahish wala badi' wala al-badi' wala al-fahash. Sorry, I'm going to repeat that. So al-mu'min laysa bi ta'an wala la'an wala al-fahish wala al-fahish wala al-badi'. So a believer does not slander, curse, uh, speak in an obscene or foul manner. What is the music scene nowadays, if not that? Yeah, that is a form of poetry. But Rasulullah saw <laughs> further. He said it, extract the wisdom. But also, there are rules to, to, to anything that we're going to extract extract wisdom from 
or listen to or 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 and 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 right so we have to understand that there is a framework under which we will have to explore that ruhaniya and that spiritual freedom mm -hmm. but you cannot just put it under the banner of spirituality spirituality without islam is meaningless yeah. it's just a lost fitra that is trying to find its way and inshallah you'll find your way to the framework the aqidah the pillars of islam the five pillars of islam the pillars of iman and we have our sharia to follow yeah right and i find uh, you know sometimes it's just um a bit frustrating to see that muslims like people they identify as muslims they pray five times a day or whatever you know they fast ramadan but because they didn't maybe they didn't study or i don't know it's just we we don't have you know this foundation of aqidah about who is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is a rasul and sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know this you know the pillar of what our faith is based on and mm -hmm. without that we go into like um the own version of islam which is not islam at the end because we basically we are inventing their own way of life they are inventing their own religion and that's um for me this can be dangerous because a lot of times we are not aware of that and we really need to go back to the initial teachings and we need to humble ourselves whether you know whether you are we are 20 30 40 50 60 if we have never taken the time to look at okay what is the correct aqida who who yeah. is it that i'm who is it that i am praying to i am a muslim i've been praying five times a day for so many decades but who is allah it's not just the construct in my mind and whatever pleases my my nafs and you know whatever feels good it's um there's a lot of you know feel good you know i need to like it, it people the they tend to think okay if i'm not feeling good if it's if it doesn't you know uh bring any some sort of pleasure then it can't be it but the thing is sometimes we we don't feel it but because it's mandatory we need to do it and with time repetition and again it only comes it's all it comes from allah and asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we get the we get to taste the um, the sweetness of iman but we don't get to invent another spirituality or other ways to understand who allah is just to suit our feelings or the people around us like a lot of us sometimes we feel like we need to uh, deliver a wishy-washy version of islam like uh, to blur the lines and mm. like at the end of the day we like there is room for everybody <laughs> which is not the case we need to i think it really comes down to not having doubt like when you have no doubt on what you believe then it's easy to say no this is wrong and this is right and stick to it and the people in front of you they will either agree with you and marhaba you know you you come into the, the religion and and we accept that or if you need to think about it then you think about it but yeah, as muslims think... we cannot we cannot compromise you know our our core beliefs in aqidah just to suit other people because you know we feel like a bit offended that oh why is it so exclusive now why why can't everybody go to to paradise <laughs> yeah yeah i understand i think um i think you know to to um to answer that question it's like it's not for you or i or anyone else right that, that who enters jannah at the end of the day is in the hand yeah. of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah 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 the other thing that I would say, I would still say like everyone is definitely welcome to Islam. It's a religion definitely. for everyone, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. However, um, you know, whether you're Muslim or not, we all function under a belief system. 
So as you said, either you constructed it yourself or your community did, um, whatever it is, or it's, you know, um, a, a religion, a biblical religion or not, but everyone functions with a belief system. So the idea is you, you, you do have to seek knowledge. I think I would give that opportunity feel, for people. I would say, acknowledge those feelings that you have and ask the questions and seek that knowledge. Your answers will be questioned. You might feel discomfort with certain concepts or rulings in Islam. Do your research. Learn from um, uh, respected scholars within our communities. Beware of the false sheikh. Right or anyone claiming to to lead you within Islam, seek knowledge from teachers that have access to knowledge to that 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 has the silsila to the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> unbroken <laughs> chain of knowledge, right? And I think like you know we we've used the word aqidah so much, but I just want to remind people that we're referring to the belief system. That's what the aqidah, the word aqidah is, is the belief system. Uh, that forms the foundations of your life. And there is a clear belief system that has been established by the Prophet والسلام, through the Quran that was revealed to him. And that's why we follow uh, the Quran and Sunnah. Right, and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, has been studied, uh, verified a hadith. The knowledge is very clear, right? So even for example, you know, you've asked me the question with with poetry and and what was it for you? Well, it's within our tradition. The Prophet والسلام, encourages us to to extract that wisdom from poets because they have good reminders to give. They have tools for us to, to memorize our aqidah, to memorize the name of the prophets, to memorize um, rulings, to memorize so many, um, you know, uh, adabs, you know, so, so ways, manners, good manners that we should have in our uh, lifestyle and in our foundations. And why reinvent, reinvent the wheel when it's right there? especially yeah. as a Muslim, right? Definitely. So for me, my encouragement is seeking knowledge. So if you do have questions, if you do have doubts, that's okay. That's just you seeking to find that fitra within you, right? That connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it has to be pure. And that can only be done if you seek knowledge, if you seek to know Allah more. And what better way than reading his book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, you want me to speak to you? Here's my book. Yeah, yeah. You want to speak to me? Raise your hands. Go on the prayer mat. You have a direct line of communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Don't waste it. Yeah. yeah. Don't waste and, it. Uh, um, I was saying that earlier, um, if this is something that you can get for free, like you don't need to, like you have no excuse. Oh, I'm poor or I don't have the means, or whatever. It is something for every one of us, this connection, or like you said, the direct line to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something that is a given for any one of us, and nobody can take it away from you. Absolutely. Like it, it belongs to you. It is there. It's always there. And the in invitation is, is, is always open, subhanAllah. And... Um, I, I find, like like you said, poetry is a tool. Like we don't have to, but if we use this tool, we might find benefit in it. And at the end of the day, whatever the tools you use, it's really about being mindful of what's inside of yourself. Because uh, Allah mentions in the Quran, Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, who comes to, he, he comes to him with uh, a pure heart, a qalb which is salim. So we need to work on this. And Islam is not just Islam, Iman and Ihsan. It's not just about the, the hijab you wear, you know, for, for men, the beard and whatever, the external. 
external is also important. We're not saying now we'd, we're going to... Yes. Uh, obviously, it is important. We have a dress code and also the behavior, how you behave with people, how you interact with people, be it the, the people who are close to you, but also people you don't know, you interact with um, like uh, randomly. But what is inside of yourself, sometimes it's even more important because what's inside of yourself only Allah knows. And he also tells us that taqwa is in the heart and mm -hmm. no one is better than the other. Like no man is better except those who have more taqwa. And taqwa is in the heart. So it means I need to work with, I need to work on what's inside of myself. And it's definitely a part of being a Muslim and a mumin. Yes, yes. And and I think the other thing that I would say, um, it's important not to be too hard on yourself. Don't demotivate yeah. yourself. You don't have to be perfect. You have to have the right intention, right? For the perfection sake of Allah. Perfection is, perfection is, is, is not uh, a goal to have. I've been saying that a few times on the podcast already. Absolutely. Uh, you don't absolutely. look to be perfect. Absolutely. We, we, you know, you've mentioned Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam asked God to see his face. Right? So his iman can be solidified. Like, it's okay to, 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 to require more at times and to require less at times for your iman to, to be, you know, secured in a way. But it's a journey that we we take uh, through the lifetime that we have on this earth. But the idea is that, that we might do the wrong thing one, once or twice, or we might maintain that wrong doing for a while. But at the end of the day, between you and yourself, you know if you did the right thing or the wrong thing, right? And the thing that I would add to that is just like once you acknowledge it, you might not have the strength to stop that wrongdoing right away or that wrong mindset that you might have. But having that intention of fixing yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor him and the tradition of his beloved Rasulullah. Right? If Allah gifted us that iman already. Right? How are you honoring it in return? So it's okay to make mistakes. In in Ahabullah ila nasi tawabun. So the word tawabun is that continuous tawbah. You don't you don't make tawbah once in your life and you're like, there you go, I've done it. <laughs> you know, it's that continuous journey. You don't go to Hajj and then give up on Islam. No, and, and on your relationship with Allah, it's a continuous relationship. Even the Mubashireen. Uh, with Jannah, the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet told them, you are going to Jannah. What did they do? They they worshipped God even more after even that. More. Yeah. Right? So I think I think it, it's that acknowledging the need for continuous spiritual development. But your spirituality cannot exist without a framework. So that's what I'm going to leave the audience with. What is your framework? Do you know it? I'm not telling you it's right or wrong, but do you know it? Right? That's that's the question for myself as well, right? I'm asking that question in terms of like, I'm asking it for myself. You said it uh, earlier so beautifully. It's about revisiting that knowledge to remind yourself to stay on the right path because you know, reading the Quran is not once. It's a lifetime of reading it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to you through the Quran, the same book in in different ways, through the same and different stories that are present uh, in the Quran, right? And it's the same thing with with the Sunnah of the Prophet. Uh, many of my salam. teachers they'll tell you you should be reading the seerah at least once a year mm -hmm. and choose different authors. Yeah. Right? Subhanallah. So yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, our tradition, our our deen is very, very beautiful in all within and from the outside, from the inside, subhanallah. Um I think what we want really to 
one of the uh, the main messages is really to convey the, this beauty and um and not being afraid of getting on this journey yes it is so important and the more you get to know your your creator the more you you love him and um subhanallah it, it's just going to have uh, so much positive impact on your life and it will help you again um overcome struggles and this is what the podcast is all about uh, again we uh, each week we have um a different guest who's going to share about her struggles and how faith helped her overcome these struggles and how it empowered her and made her stronger and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously, when you get closer to the one who is Al-Qawi, he's the one, he's yes. the owner of all uh, strength. And he is Al-Qadir and Al-Muqtadir. He is the one who has the power. He is the, the, the one who is capable of anything. When you have Allah on your side, obviously, this is going to get easier. Inna al-usr yusra. With difficulty comes many ease, inshallah. So, inshallah, inshallah. It was a really, really nice conversation to have. I feel like it could be, you know, on you know different levels, going into different layers. But uh, inshallah, I hope that it was beneficial. And I loved hearing about, um, you know, how this all went, um, this all came about. And yeah, one last question. Are um, you going? Are you going to do the tour again? Oh, very good question. I'm actually working on something right now, okay. uh, so hopefully yes, uh, but in another country, uh, inshallah. Oh. So yes, okay. mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so working on that, and inshallah, will uh, I'm not gonna mention it now, just in case it might not happen. The country okay. that I have in mind, mm -hmm. um, but inshallah, yes. So uh, hopefully later this year. And if not next year as well, inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. May yes. Allah make it easy for you if it's uh, if it's khair. May Allah make Amen. it easy for you and grant you tawfiq and success. Uh, thank you so much for making the time again today and speak with me and for the audience. I hope again it was beneficial and um, please share with us um, what were your, your insights, your takeaways. Um, what would be the last word, conclusion uh, before we wrap up, uh, Maryam? Oh wow, that is so much pressure. Uh, I, I'll say, I'll say what was on my mind when you spoke uh, about Allah being on our uh, our side, and you spoke about uh, Al Qawi, right? The, the 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 strongest. And for me, I was like, if you leave your affairs with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who's best? You put your efforts, work hard. I will I will always tell anyone who's going to ask me for advice work extremely hard plan and execute but always remember that Allah is your wakil he's your representative he's the one who's taking care of your affairs and when there are changes you from him you accept it and you see it right so have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your wakil and and no one is better than him so alhamdulillah yeah. Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al-wakil. Absolutely. Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al-wakil. There you go. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much, Maryam. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you and so much. I, I will be thinking about another excuse to have you on again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always here for you anytime, inshallah. Thank you so much, Sophia. And it's it's always just a, a breath of fresh air talking to you. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.